lots of puddles, a rubber ball, <laughs> and one happy monkey. The perfect recipe for fun on a rainy day in the country. George had lost his ball. But he had found something he'd never noticed before. A cave. George didn't know much about caves. But he knew one thing about being in the dark. You can't really see anything. How would he find the ball now? Hey, George, you want to help me bake my famous banana walnut cake? <laughs> George invited Jumpy Squirrel to help him find the ball in the cave. That squirrel didn't know what he was missing by being so jumpy. <laughs> the cave was like a new playground for George. With just a flashlight, he could bring shadows to life. And turn himself into a fearless giant. Suddenly, the cave seemed very different. <laughs> For the very first time, George was truly afraid of the dark. safety of his room, George was happy. He knew he never had to go back to that spooky cave again. <laughs> Good night, George. George, is that you? Huh, I guess I forgot to turn off the lights. Did I forget to turn off all of these lights too? Huh. Hmm. 
When Mrs. Quint asked for help setting up a surprise party for Mr. Quint's birthday, <laughs> George was almost ready. He practiced yelling, surprise, until he was really good at it. <laughs> but he wanted to be the best, so he kept practicing. You ever thrown a surprise party for Mr. Quint before? Well, it's the only way to give him a party. Because they're such a big family? Exactly. I'm watching for Mr. Quint's boat. No sign of him. Oh, you don't have to watch yet, Bill. He won't be back for at least two hours. Whoa! It's not my birthday, George. I'm not supposed to get surprised. <laughs> He's home early. No. Oh, what do we do? No. <laughs> oh, take him to your house and keep him there till party time. Not yet, George. Well, hey there, young fellas. Ooh, looks like you sprung a leak. Bad luck today, huh? Well, not all bad. Got to see part of the river I never saw before. <laughs> the bottom. Well, I gotta change my soggy socks. Oh, uh, uh, don't! I, I mean, come to our house. <laughs> we want to build a fish pond and need expert advice about fish. Uh, well, sure. Well, let me just get some dry clothes. Here, dry clothes. Go help him. <sighs> All right, Mother, if you say so. Huh? No quint can resist fish crackers. They may come in handy. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Have fun. So George and the man with the yellow hat kept Mr. Quint busy with lots of questions. What do you think? <laughs> well, if you make a pond that big, you can have almost any size fish. As George was about to ask exactly how many whales he could have, Mr. Quint's brother, Flint Quint, showed up. <laughs> hmm? oh, uh, hi. George, it's Mr. Quint's brother, the train station master. Hey, Clint, happy birthday. Hey, Flint, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, didn't you know the Quints were born together? So Flint can't know about the party either, okay? <laughs> the Quints were twins. Now George had two people to yell surprise at. It couldn't get any better. You know, I said you needed help, so I came right over. Well, this here's fish business, not trains, so you can weigh anchor. I'll meet you back at my house. Uh, don't go! Uh, uh, we want to know about running a train around the pond we're planning. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's Mrs. Quint. Disaster. The bakery truck broke down, so they can't deliver the birthday cake. Don't worry, I, I can go pick it up. Oh, Thank you. It's at Mr. Piscato's Bakery over in Franklin Square. You can't run tracks across the pond. It'll scare the fish. Well, then we'll just have to tunnel. Guys, could you monkey sit for me while I run an errand? Uh, sure. We'll just figure out the pond while you're gone. <laughs> George, it's your job to keep the quince here so the surprise isn't wrecked, okay? <laughs> George knew this would be easy, because the Quint brothers would probably argue about the pond for hours. Well, we've got it all worked out. The perfect pond and train. <gasps> so we'll monkey sit you at my house where we could draw up plans. <laughs> George had to keep the Quints here. It was important. The surprise. <laughs> Fish crackers! Ooh, ooh, ooh! It was a nice summer morning, 
So George was walking the man with the yellow hat to the subway. Sorry I'm walking so fast, George, but I can't be late. George? Well, he was when they started. But George had seen something so amazing, he had to stop. Oh, there you are. Did you see a toy you want? <laughs> you already have a dinosaur just like that. You want an oven? George never had a toy that could make cake. Sweet, delicious cake. I'm sorry, George. That's expensive, and I, I just bought you an expensive toy last week. <laughs> George, can we please talk about this later? I'm late for work. Sorry, George, but I can't buy every toy you see. Be a good little monkey. If the man with the yellow hat couldn't buy it, George would have to buy it himself. All he needed was to get a job and start earning money. But Mr. Glass didn't need a window washer today. Chef Biscetti didn't need a dish dryer. It was one of those days when nobody needed a monkey's help. The new summer display is really gonna attract customers, Dad. The palm tree goes there, beach balls on the wall, and Hawaiian lays everywhere. I like it. Good work, son. It'll take me a few hours to pick up everything. We'll set it up when I get back. I could use two more hands while you're gone. <laughs> if you had two more hands, you'd be like George. I only wish I could get an employee with four hands. Huh? 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 An employee with four hands? Here was someone who really needed a monkey. The grocer would be so happy with monkey help George would probably earn that whole oven in one day. Huh? Hey, do you work here? <laughs> Perfect. I need to choose bananas. Could you help me? <laughs> they need to be super sweet. I'm baking a banana cream pie for my mom. George knew one sure way to find the sweetest tasting bananas. These bananas belonged under the counter, not on top. How about the bunch behind you? Not the bananas in front of you, the ones behind. Try the bananas behind them. <laughs> Thanks. This is the best service I've ever had in any store. Good morning, George. Uh, I'm gonna sleep five more minutes, okay? No! <laughs> yes, sorry! This here roller coaster whips and snaps your round hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour! So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000. That's Captain's orders. Oh, well, that looks uh, very exciting, George. Uh, anyway, we have a lot of errands to run today. I, you know, I gotta... <laughs> 
Like I was saying, I'll get dressed so we can spend a fun day at Zany Island riding the Turbo Python 3000. <laughs> now don't eat all that licorice at once, okay, George? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Betsy? Hi, Hi George. <laughs> Hey, have you guys been on the Turbo Python 3000? We've been on nine times already. That's the record. Ah, is it uh, fun? He screamed his head off nine times. We're gonna ride it all day. Wanna come? <laughs> Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> and since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Well, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, pal. <laughs> that goes for you, too, son. Ride without you? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I measure to the top of a head, not the top of a hat. <laughs> You're gonna have to really grow before you can ride there, little fella. George wondered exactly how much he had to grow. But when he measured with his hand, he was the same height as the sign. He must have grown already. <laughs> You're not measuring right. I wish I had a ruler or something. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Well, the sign is five licorice whips tall, and you are one, two, three, four licorice whips tall. You can come back when you're grown one more licorice whip tall. And until then, enjoy the rest of the park. <laughs> George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. <laughs> this part of the couch made a different sound. That wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. <gasps> the man with the yellow hat lived with George, so why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? But what kind? <laughs> uh, 
Of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat had to hear this. You dreamt about an elephant? <laughs> oh, um, no more nature books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. This is better bedtime reading. The Happy Sleepy Monkey. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> this new sound certainly wasn't an elephant walking around. It was an elephant that was doing what? Sleep at all last night. George never realized there were so many sounds in the world. He'd never listened hard enough. to the apartment upstairs, where the new neighbor lived, with his elephant. 